Hey everyone, welcome back to the Declarative Academy. Today we're diving into an essential project that every Salesforce admin needs to master, create support processes. By the end of this session, you'll know exactly how to streamline case management, tailor support processes, and set your service team up for success. Let's jump right in. In this project, you'll learn how to create custom support processes to better manage cases, customize fields, page layouts, and record types for different case types, set up queues and assignment rules to route cases to the right team at the right time, and create entitlements to define different levels of customer support. You'll be stepping into the shoes of the Salesforce admin for Osa Major Solar, a Southwest-based supplier of solar components, and helping them streamline how they handle customer cases. Pretty cool, right? First things first, you'll need a fresh, brand new trailhead playground. Trust me, using a clean playground saves you a world of trouble. Scroll to the bottom of the trailhead page, click on your playground name, then hit create playground. Give it about three to four minutes to spin up. Perfect time to grab a coffee. Next up, we're adding a new user, Ada Balewa, Orsa Major Solar's customer support specialist. Click the gear icon and select service setup. On the home screen under add your users, click get started. Fill in Ada's details, use the email Ada Balewa at Orsa Major Solar your initials, today is date.com, and fill in her first name as Ada, last name as Balewa, assigning her the custom support profile. Click add user, then finish. Once that's done, you'll want to update your own user information too. Search profiles in setup, click custom support profile, and check the box for lightning experience user. Then search users, edit your own user record, and update the company field to Osa Major Solar. Just like that, you're officially part of the Osa Major Solar team. Now let's get the case status picklist values organized to help the support reps track cases more efficiently. From the Home tab, under Recommended Setup, click Customize Case Status and hit Get Started. Add three new statuses, Product Defect Logged, Product Defect Fixed, and On Hold and arrange them so they sit right under working in the list. Hit save to lock it in. These statuses will make it much easier to track the life cycle of a case at a glance. All right, it's time to create two distinct support processes, one for product issues and one for customer inquiries. In setup, search for support processes and click new. For the first one, name it product support process. Describe it accordingly and remove on hold from the selected statuses. Save that. Now create a second one, inquiry process, starting from the product support process. Keep on hold in the statuses this time, but remove others like product defect logged, product defect fixed and escalated, leaving just new working on hold and closed. This way, agents only see the statuses that make sense for the type of case they're working on. Next, let's customize the product pick list for the cases. From the Home tab, under Recommended Setup, open the case object, go to Fields and Relationships, and find Product. Add four new values, solar panels, inverters, charge controllers, and batteries. After adding them, deactivate the default values Salesforce comes with so that only Osa Major's products remain active. This keeps everything clean and relevant for the team. While we're updating fields, let's also tweak the type pick list. Still in case fields, find type, click new and add product, shipping, warranty, problem, feature request, and question. These categories will help reps immediately understand the nature of each case. Now it's layout time. Let's start with the product support case layout. Under Case Page Layouts, click New, name it Product Support Case Layout, and select the Feed Based Layout checkbox. Drag the Case Reason, Product, and Type fields into the Case Details section. Then go into Layout Properties and ensure Case Assignment is both visible on Edit and Defaulted. Save that, and then create the Inquiry Case Layout. 
this time remove the product field since it's not needed for inquiries and make sure the case assignment settings match. With these layouts, your support agents will see exactly the information they need without any unnecessary clutter. With the page layouts ready, it's time to create the record types that tie it all together. Create the first record type called product support, starting from the master record type, assign it to the product support process and link it to the product support case layout. Then create another record type called inquiry based on the product support record type using the inquiry process and linked to the inquiry case layout. Before wrapping up, fine tune the type pick list values for each record type. For the inquiry record type, leave product, shipping, warranty, and other, and remove the technical options like mechanical, electrical, and structural. For the product support record type, remove problem, feature request, and question, keeping the more technical case types. This ensures your agents aren't bogged down by irrelevant options when they are logging cases. Now for the fun part, let's test everything you've built. Switch to the service app, search for Pat Stumola and under his cases related list, click new. Select inquiry as the record type, then fill out the fields, set the type to warranty, status to working, case origin to phone, and fill in the subject and description asking about the warranty on solar panels. Hit save, and just like that, you've successfully tested your new support processes. Here's the big picture to take away. Custom support processes mean faster, more tailored service. Page layouts and record types help agents see only what's relevant, and smart picklist updates make case management crystal clear. You've just built a foundation that sets your support team and your customers up for success. Thanks for hanging out with me here at the Declarative Academy. If you found this walkthrough helpful, don't forget to like the video, drop a comment if you have any questions and subscribe so you never miss another Salesforce tip. Until next time, keep building, keep learning and keep blazing your trail. Catch you in the next one.